Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sunset Norway Mat Lodge, Stoughton, Wisconsin. I'd like to call the meeting July 8th to order. Welcome to Mat Lodge, Sunset Norway. We are gathered here together to celebrate the heritage and culture of Norway, both past and present. We are also here to enjoy the fellowship that is a vital part of our lodge. So welcome, everyone. We were hoping that by July we would be back down at the lodge, and uh, it doesn't look like we'll be there in August as well. So we had our lodge business meeting in the Mat Lodge incorporated meeting last Wednesday and had a lot of discussion. Um, the current uh, changes in the Dane County orders had just come through and uh, we are restricted to 10 people or less inside the building and 25 for outside events. So um, so we have um, uh, not a certain future of when we'll be back in the lodge um, having you know regular meetings and activities and so forth. And so at this point in time um, all uh, lodge events in the building um, through uh, at least August are canceled. Uh, the things that we do have going on, the positive parts and so forth, is our Sunday night coup at the Arneson Pitch on Sundays, the July 25th coup tournament, and our August 2nd day on the prairie. So I'm going to cover some of those items in our, in our business announcements. So first of all, a huge thank you to everyone who has sent in donations for Sitin and I. We've had 31 members send in donations for $2,910. So Thank you so much for doing that. Um, they range from $25 to $300 in size. So um, every um, amount helps because, as we've mentioned before, um, Sitinamai is our largest fundraiser. And so when we lose that and still have about $1,500 a month in uh, building expenses on average, um, you, know, um, our, our, you know, our savings are starting to go down a little bit. So we really appreciate members uh, uh, donating. We also were able um, to get $522.23 via the chamber. Um, they had um, done a, an, an on Online way for people to donate to groups um, who weren't able to have fundraisers during Sitnamai. So a huge thank you to um, to Sarah Ebert and Kelly Lapointe and, and down at the chamber for organizing that. And so for a total, we uh, have three thousand four hundred thirty-two dollars and twenty-three cents. If you're still interested in donating, you can certainly send your donation to Jane Connor, and I will send that out when I send the link out for the meeting. Our sports challenge, we have now made it to ring soccer. We've made it back to the United States, back to Minneapolis, and back to Stoughton. So congratulations, we, we made that big trek. So we are going to be sending in our donation to the District 5 Nordic Legacy Foundation. Again, that 125th anniversary challenge was to go from your lodge location up to Minneapolis where Sons of Norway started, over to ring soccer Norway where the 2020 um, International Lodge meeting was to be held, and then to make it back. So we did that. We are still looking for some pictures though for some of you who submitted miles. If you can send me some pictures of you in action, um, they want to do that as part of a post and, and recognition for that. We have an annual day on the Prairie event that happens each year along with the Kashkanan Prairie Historical Society. So thank you to uh, Gary Swain and Dana Kelly for working with us on that. It is scheduled for Sunday, August 2nd at one o'clock um, with the new restrictions that have happened. We are limited to 25 people in size in a group. And so um, we will be needing to work that day to see what we have for a turnout. We may need to divide the group up uh, into various parts. Richard Moan was to do the entire presentation on the historic buildings in Rockdale. We'll be meeting right downtown uh, Rockdale at the, the marker. It's not too hard. Rockdale doesn't have that big of a downtown and so forth. Um, but we do have to follow those restrictions. So we are asking people to wear masks and to bring your own water. Usually we, we provide refreshments and things like that, but we really don't want people reaching into a cooler with you know hands and so forth. So we're asking that you bring your own water and uh, we will deal with that. We had originally thought of having either if people wanted to meet for lunch at the Rockdale bar beforehand or go there for socializing afterwards. Um, I'm not sure on what the bar status is um, because uh, they also had some new rules that came into effect. So it may just be um, the, um, the, the walking tour and so forth in Rockdale. But again, we are limited to 25 per group. So we will deal with that um, as people come in and again, need to probably um, divide up into groups and so forth. 
support them for everyone's safety. For rose mulling, they had tremendous response to their October um, rose mulling classes. Both classes were filled, so they have reserved another weekend in order to social distance the rose mullers. And now dealing with the 10 people inside of the building, um, they've added an additional weekend that they'll be working with people who had signed up for the class to see who can go on what weekends and hopefully be able to space those out. So thank you for everyone who was um, it a part of that. Um, the Coop Tournament, we um, have decided to go ahead with it on Saturday, July 25th. Um, the Stoughton Coop Club is meeting um, via Zoom tonight to work out the details. We are limited to 25 people, so we have closed the registrations. I believe we have either 10 or 11 teams that are signed up, two people per team, and then that gives us a couple people to help uh, run the tournament. Um, so we will not allow spectators this year, and all the teams that are coming need to bring their own refreshments, their own food. Uh, typically, Sons in Norway provides pizza and wieners for sale during lunch and coffee and water and so forth. We won't be able to do that. But in true fashion for the Stoughton Coob Invitational, King Oscar is still sponsoring us, so we will have lots of sardines and mackerel to give away and lots of fun King Oscar items. So thank you to uh, to King Oscar for their support. And also we had a Thrive in Action grant for $250 to help us set expenses. So uh, we look forward to having a fun small day with our, our Coop compatriots and so forth. We have two more Sunday nights, a Sunday night at the Arneson pitch um, scheduled for this Sunday and then that Sunday before the tournament. Um, and that, again, we're limited to 25, but we've been under that. So um, we're out at um, our farm and it's just a way to practice and to learn how to play coob and to socialize a little bit. We encourage people to wear masks and we've got hand sanitizers and gloves that people want. It's hard to sanitize the coob uh, batons and so forth and you know the actual coob itself between um, throws and so forth but we have gloves if you want to wear that and hand sanitizer. Um, our Relay for Life team is looking forward to the August 1st virtual event. Um, the only in-person type of, of event that day is there's a drive-by luminar Aria ceremony um, and event that will happen by the Stoughton Hospital entrance. So if you turn off the main street up going towards the hospital, you'll see the bags. It is strictly a drive-by. Please don't get out of your vehicles. And it will go from 8 to 9 o'clock on Saturday, August 1st. So you can drive by and see all the bags that um, have been given in honor or in memory of cancer survivors and patients. Um, we welcome you to still contribute to our team. You can go to the Relays website, uh, which is Relay for Life SMO for Stoughton, McFarland, Oregon. You can find the Sons of Norway team and, and donate to a team member or just to the team. You can buy Luminaria forms um, online. That's probably the easiest way to do it, as well as to donate. Um, you can send in the hard forms and you can send them to me. We are sending um, a copy of them to the Madison office. They're all being processed in, in P. Walkie, and we just want to make sure that we get everybody's um, um, input and so forth. We are taping all the ceremonies, so if you go to the um, Stoughton McFarland Oregon Relay for Life Facebook page, you will find the links for our opening ceremonies, our survivor ceremony, um, introduction to teams and our event leadership team, um, our luminaria ceremony, closing ceremony, and our sponsor recognition. So, um, so those will be scheduled throughout the day. Um, and then you can go to the links on our YouTube channel and, and take a look at those. You don't have to go and watch the videos at a, that exact time. Those are just the times and when they'll be posted. And again, the only in-person event will be um, the drive-by luminaria ceremony. So if you are a cancer survivor, I really encourage you to go to the event website. Um, we are going to be um, pulling the survivor list on July 15th and we'll be picking up t-shirts. So our survivors will get um, t-shirts um, as long as they're registered. And, and uh, so we'll be getting that pickup then. So if you can register before that time, that would be great. So, so tonight our program is going to be a little bit about Matt Lott. 
much. So many times, you know, in any organization, there's always jargon and terms and things that happen and kind of the assumption by many of us that, well, people should know that, or we talked about that, or didn't you know that, or or whatever. And we use terms and phrases and, and uh, don't always take time to explain things and so forth. And so at our lodge, we have always done the, um, the directory um, the last four or five years um, that comes out every January that goes through a lot of these um, things. But, you know, sometimes it's always hard to find time to read it, although we've had a pandemic. So, you know, if you can't sleep at night, that might be a good thing to read and so forth. So I am going to share my screen and we are going to pull up a PowerPoint um, that goes through the um, the uh, kind of welcome to Matt Lodge. So this is something that we can also use in membership recruitment. I will leave it on uh, the playlist on our Sons in Norway YouTube channel. Um, but it basically goes through some of the, the basics about our lodge and so forth. So hopefully, um, even if you've been a member 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 10 years, you joined uh, this past year, or you're thinking about joining, it gives you a little bit of background. So we our lodge started in 1926, but actually we are either the third or fourth Fourth, uh, attempt at getting a lodge started in Stoughton. And uh, the one that started in 1926 was finally the one that succeeded. Um, John Stockson was our first president. Um, he um, was a local business owner. His family still has Stoughton Floral downtown. And, um, and so he um, provided the initial leadership for our lodge. And of course, when you go into our lodge, you can look at the wall of presidents and see, and we've got a, a little index there as well. Um, the lodge initially met in a variety of places around Stoughton. It was in 1970 that they purchased the Stoughton Norwegian Danish Methodist Church. Uh, this building was built in, in 1882 and rebuilt in 1906. Um, they had worship services in Norwegian until the 1920s. I know Eleanor Negard used to tell me that she remembered as a child uh, dancing around the poles downstairs when they were in Sunday school and so forth. Um, it's Epworth League or youth program um, brought a lot of young people into the lodge and we feel that was probably the, you know, the precursor for us bringing a lot of young people into our lodge. And in 1970, um, the church was sold and, and Sons of Norway purchased it. So let's learn a little bit about Matt Lodge. So currently, and this is again in July of 2020, we have about 230 members in our lodge. We have a really nice age uh, range in our lodge. We have lots of younger people. We have, um, you know, people in their 20s and 30s. We have, you know, people that are, are maybe on the other end of the age spectrum. We have uh, one who's a couple, one who's over 100. Uh, we have several in their 90s, but we really have a nice base of membership. You don't have to be Norwegian to join. You don't have to be a male with the sun's part and so forth. You just have to enjoy Norwegian heritage and culture. Every year we recognize our membership um, by awarding a five-year increment pin. So once you've been a member five years or 10 years or 25 or 30, they have special pins that we give out. And we also welcome Welcome all the new members um, who have come to Matt Lodge, whether they're brand new to Sons of Norway or have transferred from another lodge. Um, every year we have the third grade cultural event. This started back in 2008 where we host all the third grade classes in Stoughton from the public schools as well as private schools. Um, they come in three different ways, waves um, to the lodge. It's part of their unit on Norway leading up to sit in the Mai and to help the students learn about uh, the culture of our area and why we have that celebration. We're one of the few community celebrations that's really based on an ethnic and, and really brings out the cultural part of that holiday rather than just having, you know, food stands and, and beer tents and, you know, music and things like that. Uh, usually we have 18 stations. We have nine upstairs, nine downstairs, and kids will learn everything from how to make lefsa and the rose mall, and they'll learn about Vikings, and they'll learn about how to do hardanger. Um, they'll learn about our Viking. They'll do different types of crafts and so forth. Um, they'll do some singing at some stations. Um, every year our stations may change a little bit because I need about 40 volunteers, so it depends on who's available and who's helped before. I usually go to the previous year's volunteers as a starting point. And then the students rotate to four um, stations after we do an opening where we introduce the king and queen. Uh, because the prince and princess are also third graders, they are recognized um, during that, that time. Uh, the teachers get 
all the handouts from all 18 of the stations so that they can follow up with the students when they get back to school. We also um, do some pre-visit um, lessons um, that we send to the schools so that they can better prepare the, the students. So we're meeting a number of educational standards and appreciate the support of the Stoughton School District. The annex, when you look at our building, if you're standing on the street and you look to the right, um, it's an old church, so many churches had a parsonage and that area to the right is the old parsonage. Uh, when they bought the building in 1970, we were blessed at that point as we are now to have many carpenters and tradesmen. So they did a lot of converting of things and they converted the parsonage into an apartment. And so in the early days, and rumor has it, that's how Mike and Ruby Hoagie met, uh, that Mike was the caretaker and Ruby was hanging out at the lodge and so forth. And so we had a caretaker who lived there who would take care of the lodge and that was just part of their duties. Um, then when we joined, um, um, there were renters in the lodge, uh, Dave and Carol Sorensen, some of you may know them. And so they lived there, um, helped take care of the lodge, paid some rent and so forth. But about probably getting close to 10 years ago or so, uh, we really found we needed the space. So we discontinued renting the apartment and started to use it regularly for the kitchen use, for storage. And we have, you know, that small living room, dining room to have meeting space. We use the upstairs uh, for additional storage and so forth and we changed the name from apartment to annex. So it's had three names, Parsonage, Apartment, and now Annex. We have bake sales at our lodge and we are known for our bake sales and I think people are missing our bake sales. Uh, traditionally, we have bake sales during Sitnamai at two different locations down at Slindy's Interiors. We have an outside tent and then one outside um, at the lodge. We also have a big fall bake and vendor sale in November as well as having baked goods for our family Christmas event. Most of the items are baked at home by our members and brought in either pre-packaged or ready to package, but we also have some um, some you know times where we'll get together to make sure we have enough of the Norwegian cookies and we also make lefse and donuts at the lodge and we always welcome help for that we have great lefse makers and organizers of both the lefse and donuts um, quality is important um, but we still welcome you if you've never made before to come and learn so our, our inspectors at the end will make sure that whatever goes into packages for sale is our number one product uh, the perfectly round and perfectly fried left sun, the donuts that again are, are done to perfection. And then the rest we find other uses for. For left so we might cut it up and butter and sugar it and use it for you know meals or put it in packages to sell and so forth. The ones that are really bad we eat ourselves or you know we might toss them. Uh, for the donuts too um, they, they um, will fry some of the holes up as well but we make sure that whatever goes in the packages to sell are as our number one quality. We have bingo at our lodge the third Saturday of the month, except December. This was the concept of Don Amundsen to help bring in uh, people other than just lodge members and people who eat Norwegian foods into the lodge. And this has grown tremendously. And we have a great bingo crew that helps us each month. Uh, we have a bingo license, so we have to follow all the state gaming rules for that. And we appreciate the work um, of those um, that have to take care of that part of it. We just bought a new bingo board. We made quite an investment to um, in the past year and a half or so um, and bought a, a bingo board so we now have that mounted on our west wall and we also started progressive bingo so at our last bingo we had that over a thousand dollars so we were jam-packed with people and uh, we're we're just wondering how we're going to be able to get back to that level again but we certainly hope that uh, we can get playing bingo again uh, Barna Berkey, our district um, has a, a role up at Berkey, um, at Berkebiner weekend up in Hayward where we work with the children's race. And after the kids get done racing, there's a big tent and there's cookies in there and Swiss Miss supplies the hot chocolate. So typically um, lodges from across the fifth district will bake or buy cookies and send them up to Hayward or send money to buy cookies. They usually have up to 1200 kids skiing and there's often about 1200 dozen cookies that come. So about a dozen per child. But also, you know, the parents and the siblings and so forth, and our volunteers are nibbling on them. We also use the cookies. Um, we have an informational display um, inside of the um, kind of registration hall and where the other um, vendors and so forth are at Berkey, and some are used also at food stations. So, um, so we, they, um, when we are asking you to bake cookies and so forth, store-bought or homemade ones are great. They like if you can stay away from having nuts in the cookies so that they, um, you know, they, it's really hard to guarantee 
when you have 1200 dozen cookies to sort and so forth that they don't have nuts, but uh, we really try not to have them. And we just pack them in ice cream pails and shoe boxes and gallon Ziploc bags, any kind of container we don't need back because um, obviously with that much, it's pretty hard to get everybody's containers back. Over the years, we've done a variety of different book groups at our lodge. We have had some on specific authors, on subjects. Um, some have just found books that they like to read and have met informally. Um, this is a really good small group type of activity and probably one that we could maybe um, consider starting again now virtually where if people are reading authors, we could set up some Zoom meetings for them to meet or they could meet and socially distance, you know, in somebody's backyard or something. We also have a really nice uh, series of video lectures on the Vikings. Uh, this was donated by Mel Almy and um, several years ago, I think there's like 36 different one hour sessions in this series. So we played those every, I think it was every Thursday night um, for almost a year it took us to get through that whole series. And that was just a great one. And we had discussion afterwards. Sandy Fleming was instrumental in leading our discussion. So we um, had some discussion about resurrecting that series again. So that again might be something that we'll start doing. And bus tours. Um, we like to um, host bus tours and we like to go on bus tours. So we have a standing menu with the chamber when bus tours inquire about coming to Stoughton. We have two bigger meals, a meatball meal or baked fish meal. Um, we also offer a soup and sandwich, a soup and salad, or just a dessert option. Sometimes they're going to like the fireside and they're just going to be in Stoughton and they want dessert and coffee or something. We also have members who are willing to do cultural presentations. So they have become a very good fundraiser for our lodge. Um, we um, They have to pick one of the meals they can't have a combination of them we're not like a you know a, a, a restaurant that way and so forth um, but that's something that we do we are very involved with the chamber. We've been members of the chamber for many years. We always have a booth at the Chamber Expo and try to promote chamber activities and work with the chamber on a variety of events and, and um, try to sponsor things that, that we can. We also offer a number of classes. And so we have members uh, themselves who are very talented and willing to share. Uh, Nancy O'Dallin has headed up our rose modeling classes. Don Rorvig has taught a weekly a campus carving. Uh, Sandy Fleming and Nancy have led the um, Sami bracelet class. We've also had scrapbooking weekends that Lori Barrett has been um, working on. And then the last few years, we've had great success in leading Lufsa and cookie making classes. So we have had some, some great classes that way. Um, we have um, kind of a, a form to fill out if you're interested in hosting or teaching a class. Um, there's different ways that we run these. Some are hosted by Sons of Norway, so the registrations come through us and we pay all the expenses and in some cases um, a teacher may rent the lodge and pay a rental fee and then they take care of registration. So we've done it a, a variety of ways. We have our annual directory. This comes out in January. I run the membership list on December 31st. It goes through the lodge's activities. It lists the officers, the calendar, the birthday list, and membership list. When you join our lodge and when we started doing the directory, we asked members that if they preferred not to have their phone number or address or email listed, they needed to let me know. And if not, that information is, is put in. Um, with the birthdays, we don't put the year, so they won't know how old you are, but they'll know when you uh, listed your birth date on your membership so that we can wish you a happy birthday and so forth. Um, we're part of a larger organization. The International Lodge um, is out of Minneapolis. That's where Sons of Norway was started. There's eight districts um, in our International Lodge. Um, uh, District 8 is Norway. Um, we also have lodges in Canada. And so that's why at the lodge meetings, we sing all three national anthems, the Norwegian, the Canadian, and the American national anthem, why we fly the three flags. And many times you'll see the three flags in many of our um, publications. International is the one that will send you the Viking. They'll send you your dues uh, renewal notice. Um, dues, everyone has their own renewal date. And with the new dues structure, it's within your household. We are a fraternal organization. Sons of Norway was started by a group of Norwegians who needed insurance. And the insurance part of Sons of Norway is still a very important aspect. They give over a million dollars to what we call Sons of Norway, the fraternal part. 
and uh, the insurance company does. And, uh, and so they are governed by our international board of directors. On a district level, we are in District 5. Our district is Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, and Tennessee. Um, within District 5, we have smaller um, areas that are called zones. We are in Zone 3. We typically host a Zone 3 picnic, so, um, and we always attend our Zone 3 leadership meetings. Our district has a youth heritage camp called Masamoro, which is up in uh, the Eau Claire area. It's for kids that are 9 to 15 years of age. We also have a district foundation as well as the international has a foundation. When you walk into our lodge, if you look up before you come in the door, you will meet Folkbar, and he is our dragon. And he was uh, the, the, the work of two very, very talented Mat Lodge members, uh, Don Rorvig and Roger Hansen. And so uh, he was put up several years ago, um, and we had t-shirts made. So if you want to have Folkvar with you, he stands for Guardian of the People. We have conventions in even years. So we have the district convention and lodge meeting, just like we have Mat Lodge. Our district is a lodge, and then we have the international lodge. Delegates are elected from each lodge. Each lodge gets two, and then um, from there, it's based on the number of adult members you have on December 31st. So you get for every, oh, like, 50 over 50, you get another one and so forth. So we normally qualify for four delegates and uh, we elect those delegates in February of the even years. Their district lodge meeting and convention is held in June of the even years. And then the international convention is typically in August of that year. And our conventions uh, move around the district. So um, lodges will put in bids to host a convention. In 2022, Eden Lodge in Madison will be hosting it. Email. Well, you will get them if you join our lodge and give me your email. Um, I try not to overdo it, but uh, email and our Facebook page seem to be our two best ways of reaching our members. So I will send you um, updates on activities and events and when we have signups and so forth. Um, I have a monthly update that I do called Meanwhile at Mant. And so that will, um, I try to get it done like right on around the first. It'll always have the upcoming birthdays and so forth for the month, the um, updated calendar. And if there's anything that is due, or registrations or forms and things like that. We also have those little white attendance slips that you fill out when you come to meetings. And um, I entered that information into a large database. So we have about 1,400 names in there over the years of people who come to lodge events who aren't members. And so they get periodic reminders about events and activities that are coming up. For those who don't list uh, their email on that, we send out about a quarterly um, postcard to them. So that's our, our way of keeping them connected and welcoming them back to the lodge. We do a family Christmas event um, each year in December, free photos with Santa, a dollar shopping area, breakfast served downstairs, craft stations, a bake sale. It's just a wonderful event and just a, a beehive of activity and so forth. And our youth director works with the crafts. We have um, in the dollar shopping area, if you have um, gifts that might be good for moms or dads or siblings, um, the kids go in without the parents and everything is a dollar in there. And they have some beautiful items that they can come in with their little shopping list and so forth and leave with. So it's a very, very very popular event. Also popular are our fish boils. We hold those in the spring and fall, usually April and October, but we kind of, you know, look to make sure we're not competing with other ones in the area. Um, we serve Icelandic cod, potatoes, carrots, onions, cherry dessert, um, some type of bread or bun, and a beverage. Um, we boil the fish in the back over an open flame, and all the rest is cooked inside the lodge. Um, we um, do follow um, strict food license and food handling procedures. Um, we um, are actually classified as a restaurant. We have one member who has gone through the Serve Safe um, food license process, Jerry Erdahl. So he is our, um, our person to help remind us of rules and regulations and procedures and ways we can do things better in handling food. We require anyone who is going to work in the kitchen or work with food um, to sign a form that states that you aren't sick and if you are sick or not feeling good and now they have a new one with COVID um, that you won't be around food and we will send you home. If you come in and you say, oh my gosh, I'm so plugged up and I've got a cold or I've been sick the last couple of days, we will um, just politely ask you to please go home because we don't want to get sick. We don't want to have things transferred to the food and to the people that we're serving. So we are very strict about that. So please take that um, in the um, goodwill that it is given in. 
We um, also have strict um, hand washing procedures and, and uh, hair nets and gloves and proper food handling and storage and, and temperature monitoring and so forth. So again, uh, we do our best to, um, to try to educate people about that. And, and if we ask you to please do something a different way, don't take it personally. We're following the guidelines that we've been taught. And our goal is to have a good experience for ourselves, for the people coming to our lodge and those enjoying our food. Um, in the back of the lodge is Fosshagen. That is our outdoor fish boil pergola built by Howard Foss and Rich Hagen. It's a beautiful structure and uh, we've had some, some brickwork done and built a beautiful fish boil area. So um, we uh, named it after the, our two craftsmen who have done lots of projects around the lodge, but that one we thought deserved a name. In October, it's Foundation Month for Sons of Norway. We raise money for the Sons of Norway Foundation in Minneapolis and uh, also could consider giving to our district foundation. We've had a variety of foundation directors and they've all done different things. We've had theme nights and pie sales and basket sales and live and silent auctions. And this year we're considering maybe a ticketed um, type of raffle since we aren't in person and so forth um, for, for raising money for the foundation. Uh, the foundation gives money for scholarships and grants. They have emergency funds and uh, provide lots of opportunities. We also have a lot of fundraisers because we own our building. Again, it takes us about $1,500 a month to keep the building open as far as our insurance and utilities and all the licenses and fees and other things associated with the elevator and commercial hoods and dishwashers and things like that. So we raise money in a variety of different ways. We host bus tours and meals. We have the fish boils and we've done some other specialty meals over the years. Um, Sitinamai is our biggest fundraiser by far. Uh, typically, we raise about 15000 that weekend. So again, we really appreciate your donations towards um, our non sitnamai this year. We have bake sales and classes. We play bingo. Um, and we have other products for sale, too. We've done cookbooks. We sell the Left Sun Donuts. We host uh, bus trips to places. Um, last year, we did two trips down to Chicago to the Christmas market. We've gone to Nordic Fest. Uh, a number of years ago, they went to Hus Fest. So those are good fundraisers for us as well. Uh, we like to have fun at, at Sons in Norway, and one of our most fun events is Eula Booking. This is done between Christmas and New Year's. It's a kind of a combination between Christmas caroling and trick-or-treat. We visit uh, many of our older or shut-in members or members who live in some of our residential facilities around Stoughton, and then we have a social event afterwards. So part of Eula Booking is when you go, we take treats, which is kind of the caroling part, but also the host will usually give us um, some type of adult beverage and, and treats and so forth. So it's quite a fun night. We also love to play Kub in Stoughton, and so our lodge helps host the annual Kub Invitational. Kub is a Viking uh, game. Um, they played it with skulls and bones. We have refined it to using wooden batons and wooden Kub pitches and so forth. We have Sunday night at the Arneson pitch for practicing in the summer, and, um, and then many of our lodge members are the active members of the Stoughton Kub Club. And uh, we divide the profits. Uh, half the profits usually go to the Sons in Norway youth program, youth and sports programs, and the other half is given to a charity in town. So we have given to a variety of charities over the years. We have a library at the lodge and you are certainly welcome to come and check out books. We also have some VCR tapes. So if you still got a VCR machine at home, we got some great tapes and so forth. And we have some DVDs. The VCR tapes and DVDs we do keep in a closed cabinets would just ask to see them. You simply just fill out the card that's inside the book and put it, there's a nice rosemald box and mounted on the side of the library. Bring them back when you're done. It isn't like a two week loan period, but we do like them to come back to the lodge. We do have a number of, of books in Norwegian um, that are in the annex in that part of the library. So if you um, know how to read Norwegian, you are certainly welcome to check those out. If there isn't a card in them, uh, we'll work with you and, and get those cards made. Um, those are our books that don't get used very often. And so if you um, are a, a native speaker and, and can read Norwegian, we really encourage you to take a look at that. Man Lodge Incorporated um, actually owns the building. We have a building corporation. So they are the deed holders of our building. They own all the equipment and property within it. Uh, they are governed by a group of officers. Um, the annual meeting was just held last week and uh, they take care of all the things building related. So, um, so that um, when, Matt, when you join Matt Lodge, you're joining the Lodge, and all our Lodge members are automatically members of Matt Lodge Incorporated. 
Our lodge meetings, um, we have both business and program meetings. Business meetings, which were formerly called officer meetings, are usually held the first Wednesday of the month. They're open to all members and officers. I send out the meeting resource packets, so every member who has email, and we also have hard copies that are available at the lodge for those who aren't. Um, they include the agenda, the calendar, all the financials, the minutes, so um, all members are aware of the business of the lodge and what we're um, going to be covering, and you are welcome to come to those. Our second Wednesday of the month is typically our program and, and cultural meeting night. So we handle some business there, uh, but the bulk of it is done at the business meetings. But there are some things that we do have to do in the, the large group ones, electing our officers, electing delegates, if we're making any uh, major changes or expenditures and so forth. We will take that before the full uh, lodge meeting and so forth. And during Advent and Lent, we move the meetings to Thursdays so that we're not competing with people's ability to go to church. Um, we have newsletters, they're usually done quarterly, but we really don't have a set schedule on that. We have advertisers who help us set the printing and postage, so please thank them when you see them. Our editor does the final edits and distribution of the newsletter, and then again, we have the monthly updates called Meanwhile at Mant. Our officers serve for two-year terms, they're elected in odd years, so a nominating committee helps to surface the committee, or the candidates many times, it's the officers that are working on that. Uh, we elect in October and then they are installed in January of the even year. So, uh, so we just elected last fall. So we've got uh, this year and then full next year. And then about next uh, September or so, we'll, we'll start the nomination process. And um, we usually begin by asking officers if they want to run again. And then we know where openings are. But certainly we can, um, you know, have competition for, for ones as well. Matt Lodge, thanks to the, the grants from the Bryant Foundation, as well as much of the handiwork of our lodge members um, is part um, the the kind of it's handicapped accessible as well as um, we've we've um, had some help with parking so we have a lift located on the south side of the lodge a lift is a little bit different than an elevator you have to keep your finger on the button so if you're coming in from outside you're on the second level so you want to press that number two and hold it till the door comes open we don't pull the door shut we let it shut by itself um, if you want to come up to the main meeting hall you're on third floor, so you hold the number three button in when you're inside the lift, and when you get there, it'll click, the door will open, you'll go out. Again, don't shut the door, it'll shut by itself. Uh, the first level is the downstairs. We also have a ramp going into the lower uh, level, um, into the dining room downstairs. Our bathrooms are handicapped accessible. We also have diaper changing stations in both the men's and women's bathrooms. And we have street parking only, which is uh, not the most convenient. But if Les Frieza is closed next door, um, they allow us to use their corner parking lot. So again, if their building is open, don't park there. But if their building is closed, we are certainly welcome and we appreciate their um, willingness to let us use that. We have a Relay for Life team. We started back in 2001, so this is our 19th year. Any members can join the team and you can support us. Uh, we usually do a fundraiser at a spring meeting this year. For those of you that were there in, in February, we were, uh, had Ludafis that was donated by the various sausage kitchen that we gave out. Uh, we have donations. We've done different things like candy sales and book swaps and other fundraisers. And again, you can give donations online to our team or to our team members. And Anyone is welcome to attend the event. Again, this year due to COVID, we're just doing the drive-by, but please come and and visit us. Um, you saw the program we did, or if you didn't, you can watch it on the YouTube uh, channel for Midsummer last month, um, which is also called Santanstag um, in Norway. We used to have royalty that reigned over this festival. We just continued that a number of years ago, and now often we might have a summer picnic or bonfire or some type of event we celebrated at Coop two weeks ago. And, and so each year we kind of change a little bit as to what we're doing for, San, for Santans. For scholarships, um, we have scholarships that we give to our Mat Lodge members children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. I think I forgot to put children on the list there. They are typically due on June 1st. If a member doesn't have children, their nieces or nephews are eligible. They must be a member in good standing for at least, at least six months. Um, and in good standing means they paid their dues. So they need to be current with their dues. So again, Matt Lodge members, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren are eligible. And again, if the member doesn't have children, their nieces and nephews can apply. The sign of the order. So if you 
see this at the lodge meetings, or I ask you to vote by the sign of the order. It's part of the fraternal tradition. It's an official sign of sons in Norway. And I couldn't find the exact def or, um, description of it, but I, I know I'm pretty darn close that the index finger is pointed north towards the North Star, and the fingers are wrapped around, and I believe that's for unity and harmony in the lodge. So when we ask you to vote, we don't typically, except when we've been doing Zoom meetings, say, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. We ask you to signify by um, showing the sign of the order. Sports and medals. We like to have fun. We have lots of active people in our lodge. So uh, we have sports medals that are for walking and skiing and biking and general fitness. But if you're a pickleball player or a canoe or a kayaker or a runner or a bowler or golfer and so forth, you can still um, keep track of those uh, miles or minutes or um, the um, measures and so forth and fill out those sports medals. Um, Todd Fossum and Jens Arneson are two sports directors. We also offer organized coob bowling and other events and we also participate in a variety of different district events when they're offered. We are also part and, and really the organizer of the Stoughton Norwegian Summit Group and Destination Weekends. Uh, this is a group that was organized by Sons of Norway um, a number of years ago. We got a foundation grant to do it. We had many different groups and organizations and businesses in the greater Stoughton area that all had a Norwegian interest or theme but we really weren't working together. So we had a big summit and we had a big meal and we all talked about what who we were and what we were about and what our challenges were. And so rather than competing with one another, we work together to help promote each other's events. And so it's kind of evolved into two weekends a year. In October, our destination weekend is around uh, when, usually the last Saturday when the Wisconsin State Rosemallers Association has their sale, and then in February around Norris Afternoon of Fun. So we send out um, a, a questionnaire to all the groups involved in businesses asking what they have going on that weekend and if they have any special events, and then we post that. The Chamber helps put it on their website, and for people coming into town, it gives them not just one event to go to, but a number of things that they can come in and we've actually had some groups that have brought some buses in for a destination weekend and taken in a lot of those um, opportunities so our goal is to to get people coming to Stoughton and also just for Stoughton people to have you know something um, more than just the one event to go to many times you know we think well we got sitting in my they can go to those things that weekend but many of us are busy and volunteering and don't get a chance to do that and speaking of sitting in my that's our biggest fundraiser that's when we're making like four pans of rum grub bars also known as Norwegian crack and so forth so this is uh, Diane Mauer and Linda Maskell uh, a helper from Minnesota who comes down uh, that is our, our go-to weekend when we need everybody's help. And that's the time of the year when we do ask everyone to help contribute somehow with time, with donating baked goods, financial contributions. If they're busy with other things that we can to come help make meatballs or lefse or donuts or cookies ahead of time and so forth. We offer sit-down meeting meals on Saturday and Sunday. We have two bake sale locations and we have bingo on Saturday. Uh, we have lots of food preparation and Advanced. We have lots of food preparation that weekend. We have lots of food preparation during the weekend. We have cleanup afterwards, but we have a good post sit in my party to celebrate it all. Social media. So we are social, that's for sure. We have our own Facebook page, Sons in Our Way, Stoughton, Wisconsin. We also share a lot of things on the District 5 and the official Sons in Our Way Facebook pages. Uh, we have signs up at the lodge stating um, that unless um, we're notified by someone that any pictures that we take can be used on, on social media. So if you don't want your picture used in a post or something, you need to let me know. I do have a, a small list of members who prefer not to have their, their, um, you know, their image put on. Um, we post all of our, our activities and events as Facebook events so that we can um, have you share them with your friends and, and uh, have more people coming. We tend to do a summer picnic in conjunction with the Zone 3 picnic. It's usually out here at our farm in the shed. Sometimes we do separate lodge picnics, but usually it's, it's with um, um, the Zone 3 or that we are having a midsummer. Usually it's a typical you know potluck and so forth. And, and when we do it in conjunction with Zone 3, there's usually updates from the other lodges that come as well. We have a, a great sunshine director. Joyce Foss is our current sunshine director and she is great about sending cards and flowers and other things to members um, to bring um, to help celebrate special events to uh, send get well wishes and thinking of you and expressions of sympathy. 
but if we don't know there's something going on, we can't send something. So if there is something going on, please let us know so that we can let Joyce know and she just does a wonderful job. We also have the Viking magazine. So when you join Sons of Norway, you'll get a monthly magazine from the International. It's our official publication. So you'll see uh, minutes in there from the International um, Board, um, from the Foundation Board, uh, notices and meetings and so forth. Um, the district pages, again, we're in District 5, so watch for Mat Lodge members. So um, they only put in like three or four pictures per month, so we don't get in there all the time. But, you know, it's always fun when we do. Uh, read your copy and then share it with somebody if you want. Give it to someone to help promote Sons of Norway and to share of uh, their um, you know, interest in maybe joining or what's happening and so forth. And we have many, many years of old issues. So if you want to go back to like the 30s or 40s and so on, uh, we keep those in the annex or up above where the Norwegian books are and you certainly are welcome to take a look at those. Toop from, we have a white uh, kind of wastebasket with a flip-flop uh, lid on it that says toop from. So if you tear off your stamps um, when you get mail and so forth, um, the stamps need to be be trimmed to a quarter inch border and we collect those. Um trim stamps are ones that um, we've taken off all the excess paper. There isn't a, you know, like the, the back of the envelope behind it. It's just the stamp on that, that sheet of paper. And uh, for every pound of trim stamps that are sent in, you can put your name on a postcard and those are entered into a drawing. It used to be for a trip to Norway. Now I think it helps to offset most of the costs for a trip to Norway. And Tube From is actually a nonprofit group in Norway. They provide um, scholarships and grants to handicapped children and groups and organizations and they are in Nespian, Norway. And so this was a picture when we visited to from a number of years ago of their director holding a perfectly trimmed stamp. We have lots of youth activities. We love to have young people come to the lodge. That's why you see a kid's picnic table um, there so they have something small to sit on. We have high chairs available. We have the third grade cultural event and contest each year, the family Christmas event. We support campers to Masamoro. We have bowling and coop and sports. Kids are welcome to all our lodge meetings and events and, and activities. We want you and your family to come. We've had youth classes in the past for, we've had some stitching ones. We've had some rose modeling classes. We've talked about having some day camps, uh, but we welcome families to come and uh, we hope that we are family friendly when they do. Um, kind of as we close up, the moniker for Sons of Norway is in Mant Lodge at least, is the public is always welcome at Mant Lodge. So um, there are, are very, very rare things that we don't allow non-members to come to. Obviously, they can't vote at business meetings and so forth, but they are welcome to come if they want to, to hear discussion and so forth. Um, but the, the public is always welcome to our events and meetings and activities. And so we use this moniker many times on our events and so forth. So um, thank you for your membership in Sons of Norway. I hope that this was a little bit helpful. And if you're not a member of our lodge, we sure would love to have you. Jane Connor is our membership secretary and does a wonderful job. You can join Sons of Norway by going online to sofn.com and look for the lodge directory. And then you can sort by state and find us, or you can fill out a paper form and Jane helps process those so we can get that information to you. And so as we um, finish our meeting here, um, officers and members, I thank you for tuning in to view this meeting and I hope that um uh, we will be able to do this in person soon. Our next meeting, though, will be on Wednesday, August 12th. I will record it and post it to our YouTube channel. The Zoom business meeting will also be on August 5th, and I will be sending out the meeting packet and other information for that. Um, um, tonight's program was um, Matt Lodge, a little bit of history and background, and I'm not sure what the August one will be yet. So, so if I had John here, he's our counselor, he would say, may he peace and harmony prevail in our lodge. We hope that you are doing well. If there's things that we can do to help or assist you, please let us know. We do have a few extra donuts and some of the odd and you know sizes and so forth left us. So if you're in need of a fix that way, we can help you out with that. But I am going to declare this meeting adjourned and thank you for tuning in and stay safe. And we hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much.